Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for iPad Today is provided by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Coming up on iPad Today, we're making it rain yeah. with some summer weather apps. <laughs> Plus the Pope's <laughs> gun tablet, amps versus volts, and should you put your iPad to sleep? All that in Harry Potter mania on iPad Today. iPad Today is brought to you by FreshBooks, the easy online invoicing service that gets you paid quickly and makes you look more professional. Get started with a free package at FreshBooks.com. And by Netflix. Watch thousands of TV episodes and movies on your PC, Mac, iPad, iPhone, or TV instantly. All streamed directly to you, saving you time, money, and hassle. For your free 30-day trial, go to Netflix.com slash twit. Hello, ladies and gentlemen and iPad owners. It's iPad Today on the air once again with the beautiful Sarah Lane. Doing the Roger Rabbit. Is that called the Roger Rabbit? Well, the Roger Rabbit actually isn't supposed to be done in your chair. But yeah, this is as close as I can get without actually standing up. And I learned things. this from the uh, Fly Girls on, uh, what was that show? Uh, in uh, Living Color. In Living Color. Jennifer Lopez. That's the running man. That's yeah. awesome. I can't believe That's you just did that. That's not the Roger Rabbit? No, Roger Rabbit's different. You kind of go backwards. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome you, you, to the you to the Running Man All Dancing Edition of iPad Today. That's awesome. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> so, okay, here's what's funny: is that yesterday we were like, okay, we've got to figure out what our theme's going to be tomorrow. And I suggested, hey, what about you? Know, we're just getting into summer weather. Everyone's talking about the weather all the time. We just had it rain in San Francisco, which was kind of weird for June. Let's do weather apps because we haven't done them in a while. And so that's last what I night, said. I said we just didn't we just do them? And you said no, we haven't done them in a while. We haven't done them in oh, well, so if we ages. Haven't, it's been a long time, yeah, I guess. It's been like a year, and it turns out that. <laughs> We just, we've, we've never, never done them. We've never done weather apps. We have talked about weather apps individually and in passing, but never as a theme. Because I went through all of our rundowns. Well, and I did a thing that Crazy. I've not done before on this show. What? But it was kind of because Google launched Google Plus this week. I wanted to see. I compared. I I I did a query on both Google Plus and Twitter. I saw that. Which I've never done before because I I feel like that's kind of cheating. Right. Like, it's I like, like, like want to do our research for us. Yeah. Although I think that that's. Not really true because we get so much good information from people, and it really paid off. I uh, I have to say we got so many responses. <laughs> we got more than a hundred responses on uh, Google, and many probably five hundred responses on Twitter. Yeah. Although I was very impressed that Google Plus, which is two days old, generated so much traffic. It was I really good. I think it's good. a hit. I think so too. I really do. I'm in. I I straight up enjoy. I have Google Plus in my tab right here, and it's like Me too. all Ooh, the time. When we're done with the show, I'm gonna. Check my notifications. Unfortunately, and I'm having fun with and it. And this is kind of uh, part of the news segment, but iOS is a little bit left out in the cold right now. It's an yeah. Android app, but not an iOS app. Uh, I think that you can can't is it's yes. limited on the iPhone. But plus.google.com does work on Safari and right. and everything, but just not. You as can't well. participate in Hangout, which is right. like the coolest part of Plus. Well, you can't do that the on the uh, Android either. Oh, you so. can't. No. Oh, I thought that. Uh, oh, that would be nice. They did have a kind of a FaceTime competitor, but you can't. Well, what? Why? Why not? Well, they do allow, and I suspect this is what is happening in, uh, welcome to Android News segment on mm -hmm. iPad today, but they do allow if you have the most recent version of Gingerbread 2.3.4, Google Talk has a video function on the Android phone, but so few phones okay. have that version that it's kind of small. I, I suspect that they will add that eventually. That's That's got to be on the... Road list. In any event, uh, don't feel too left out if you're an iPhone or an iPad user because uh, we talked to Google on Tuesday on This Week in Google and uh, and Vic Gundotra, who's in charge of this project, mm -hmm. he's Senior Vice President of Social, says, absolutely, there's an iPhone app in the works. We will have an iPhone. He didn't say iPad, but I presume they'd make iPad compatible. If it's an iOS app uh, or, you know, if it's some sort of... Uh, I don't know HTML5 type of well that's an thing. interesting that, play. that would be I, I would prefer I don't that know actually. if they could do all of I'm the not sure uh, either hooks and stuff that's an interesting yeah play. the hooks and the whistles and the bells yeah. okay so back to weather it's Whoa. very it's very nice outside but I don't really know what temperature it is actually that's not true I do Leo 
It's 76 degrees in here anyway. Uh, oh, yeah, thermometer. because you've got the but, a thermometer. But what if you didn't? How what, would you know? Well, there's a variety of ways. What we tried to do was figure out b between all of the suggestions that we got. And by the way, I think we, sh we have to mention um, whether... Uh, uh, which weather, one is it? Weather Plus. We okay, so Weather HD, we weather actually HD. weren't going to talk about because we've talked about in the past. Huge mention. Overwhelmingly, that. that is the favorite among at least the viewers who participated. It's a very iPad y app. It's not it a is. great weather app, to be honest with you, but it's just beautiful. Now, you've launched it. It's going to take a little while because it's got all this video in it. Yeah. Fact, it's, 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 uh, it's not something for instant weather updates. <laughs> I was gonna show you guys, and I mean, I, it's like I should have had it preloaded, which is your number one problem already. It's right. like I just want to know what if it's raining outside. Well, and it's beautiful. Uh, I will show the one that I've picked before. I, I don't know if I picked it on this show, but I think it was a pick at least on Mac Break Weekly, and that's Weather Plus. And a lot of people mentioned this as well because it's so mm -hmm. beautiful. It has some of the Weather HD capabilities. It has the background. You know, it's a sunny day in Austin, so you're getting clouds with sun in Los Angeles. It's also a sunny day, so you're getting clouds with sun. Let's find somewhere where it's raining. It's a sunny day. Oh, look at that. Pretty trees in Petaluma. That is not a video. Here we go. Weather HD is now So here's us. my here's Weather HD. It it's only beautiful. took a minute to load. It's very nice if you like that sort of thing. I think it's a little bit prettier than it is functional. That's why I kind of like Weather HD or Weather Plus because in many ways this this has that kind of beauty. Uh, with a lot of functionality. I mean, look at look at all of this. Oh, look, it's the cherry blossoms are in bloom in Los Angeles. Uh, I don't think that's true. No, but it's, it's not pretty. really cherry blossom season. But, but you yeah, see, it, it is we very have pretty. a big clock. Uh, we have uh, the five day forecast. Oh, it's hot day in Austin. Hour by hour. You know, here, cherry blossom nice. country. At night, you get the. That's very much like Weather HD, isn't it? In fact, yeah, it is. It's pretty much the same as you're getting right now. Yeah, I mean, the idea, of course, is that we're seeing a visual representation of what it would look like if you actually craned your head out the uh, out the window and looked at the sky. So it's it's very cool. But I think something more along the lines of let me go back to my my weather folder, which I have actually created. Me too. I have so many weather apps. I was stunned at the number of weather apps there are. This is a huge there are, category. There are a crap ton yeah. of them. And and it's every once in a while someone will say weather app. I mean, who really cares about that? Many people. Oh my gosh, there are. I've there known are, that for years, though. You know all those weather clocks, and people have weather stations. Well, you look, you've you've that me, comes even in handy me, all the time. Yeah. And yeah. you'd think you'd think, frankly, that uh, people would just and a lot of wags on Twitter did say this. Just stick your head out the window, Leo. <laughs> but uh, we want to know more than just what does it look like right now. We want to know what's coming up. We want to know a lot of detail. We want to see weather maps. And so these apps really do kind of give you a huge amount of information. I mean, humidity alone, you look out the window, it's sunny. Uh, depending on the humidity, some places are, I mean, it could be downright uncomfortable. It's like, right. so here's an app, a weather app that I was unfamiliar with before you actually recommended it to me. Alias or oh, Elias. You stole it. Oh, did I got you, this on you Twitter. Show me? No, you show me. Okay, this is amazing. It's so, here's, so beautiful. It is. The, I mean, this is by far my favorite. Um, we ended up. I was going to talk about it first, but we got a little bit sidetracked, as we tend to do. This is the coolest app ever. Okay, so you've kind of got your. It looks like a compass type of situation where I'm. I'm. I'm sort of hanging out in Quebec area. So what you do is you're you're dragging. Um, your little disc over the world, and you can drag and or you can you can zoom to get uh, closer or farther away, depending on what you want to do. Now, what it will actually do is, depending on what you're hovering over, it'll automatically click into what's the most populated area of the area you're over. So this happens to be Alberta, Canada, right? Um, which is 849 feet above sea level. It tells me the current time. It also gives me the window of darkness. Now, of course, because Alberta is so high up, there's not a lot of darkness look at, that. at Isn't this that time cool? of year. And look how it changes. Yeah, as you... so if I go up way high, it's like, okay, so this is like where people go crazy because the sun never <laughs> right. sets. That's the sort of it's, area that we're in. I mean, just for in. that alone, this is so cool. I love it. So it's not, I mean, it's, uh, yes, it is weather, but it's also time zones right. and uh, geography and uh, local times. And I just this is the coolest thing ever um and you can spend a lot of time on it in fact i was hanging out in brazil earlier where of course you know close to the equator so i don't know what now, i did now this one came to us from tim trapman this was on google plus tim trapman recommended this and you can see i plus one him at 8 25 a.m making him the winner a number of others recommended it but he was the first so thank you tim trapman for this absolutely this is the greatest A E L I O S. uh it is an ipad uh, native app 
I don't think they, in fact, I, don't, I know they don't have an iPhone app, which is a shame. And uh, the cost uh, for this app is... $2.99. Uh, and that's not forever. It's a special right now. So if you like get this, it get now. on it before yeah. it goes up. Oh, my hometown of Sebastopol. It's 158 there, you know. <laughs> Just like here, because it's about 15 miles away. Uh, but anyway, there's a bit of a learning curve. As you can see, I kind of got a little confused as to like, how do I get my time zone back? It's a, you know, I'm looking at something a little bit different. So it's, it's fun to click around in. Of course, you've got your information area. So if you get lost, it'll give you all sorts of options. So, some weird stuff like, why are my options not able to be seen in landscape mode uh, when everything else is? Not really sure about that. They do have a nice instructional YouTube video, though. So if you're like, I just don't even know where to start, um, when you actually launch... Uh, ALS for the first time this YouTube video will just will just launch over your app So it's not actually just gonna dump you into YouTube But if you want to watch that that helped me get started as well. It's really cool again 299 probably not forever um, Their website is aliasapp.com a-e-l-i-o-s app.com and we thank uh, for the next one Kareem Ardalan Thanks, who Kareem. recommended weather doodle from tiny mammal this is now have San you Francisco seen this before? company Oh, I've heard of Tiny Mammal, but no, I have, I don't, I don't. I think Weather Doodle is pretty pretty. Now, you purchased an extra Weather Doodle. Let me show my. Please this do. This is the basic Weather Doodle. This is on my uh, one this negative. This is what you get for it 99 is, cents. It is portrait only, unfortunately. Yeah. But it is a very kind of, um, I don't know, it's, kind of, it's cut out, looks like cut out paper. It's like DIY weather. Yeah, I really <laughs> like it. I really, really like it. Um, it doesn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just pretty. There is a forecast, which is also done in this style. But the neat thing is... I like where it's like, chance of rain, question mark. I don't know, maybe. Maybe. Could be. I think. Yeah. I mean, isn't this sweet? Yeah, it's cute. This is a really... But now you've spent a little money. I spent a little money. And you and bought some additional doodles. I did. And I've, again, I'm just obsessed with Sebastopol's weather. I'm not really. I almost it's never do where this. where you're but from. Yeah, it's where I'm from. So what you do is in the information area... If you click this, you get your nice little dialog box. So you can choose your locations. It gives you a bunch of locations, just as default, Cupertino, Anchorage, Copenhagen, Milan. Um, so I went ahead and added Sebastopol. You just uh, add the plus button and, and put in a city or zip code. So that's really easy, really, uh, easy to do. Um, use current location. And then, whoops, let's go back. And then, oh, it's going to make me now, isn't it? Uh, oh, you have to do it? Yeah. You can also do zips. Holtzville is zero, 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 zero. Let's You're take it. Me. Let's weird. take it because we're in a hurry. Long, Long Island. Island. Okay, <laughs> fine. So if you go back to settings, <laughs> so you can choose between current art. Now, if, uh, the way that Leo showed you, if you go ahead and buy the app for 99 cents, you just have one by default. But if you get new art, and, and it's this not is free. In, in app purchases. Yeah. yeah. It's not free, so it's like, eh, you just if you want it, great. It's, it's definitely not going to change your life, but it does give you some more artwork. Um, as I like that one. As that, another what option. was the one that you had? What was that called? It's that called was... Eurocarta, and it's new. Yeah. So this this it's app like is not brand new. It's like an new, old map. Uh, the old map. Uh, you know what it reminds me of? If we hmm. go back out of settings here, it reminds me of the uh, Smashing Pumpkins album art yeah. for uh, Melancholy and the Infinite Isn't Sadness. Some of you guys will probably. Oh, and then it it, 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 it it crashes from time to time as well. I hadn't noticed Some of that. you guys will uh, will know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it's it's artsy. It's if if you like this sort of look, then Weather Doodle is fun. It's different. You know, gives you a sense of uh, the forecast, current weather, and. I don't know what this is. Now, people are thinking now that we're pretty <laughs> dumb and lightweight. It's probably downloading the Sebastopol weather. Thank you very much. I don't much. know what's it. You know, I, I'm always blaming our Wi Fi. We did actually have Wi Fi issues yesterday, so. Oh, yeah. You know, it's. I remember I'm you shouted down the up. stairs. You said, said, Is anybody having internet what's problems? Going on? And I said, Yes, I spent a lot of time looking at naked pictures on the internet. And I don't I think said, that's what you were looking I said, Thank you. Uh, wasn't the problem I was talking about, but I'm really glad to know that. Yeah, I think our internet has suddenly slowed. Yeah. So it's you're going to think bird. right now from the two things we've shown you that we are... That we're ninnies. Eye candy sluts. Yes. That we're ninnies. That we don't care as much about weather as you do. Right. So for those of you who care a lot... Weather, they care a lot. Weather Pro HD for the hardcore weather guy. Yeah. Look at these. Hanover, Hanover. Frankfurt. Yeah, this is a, a, a satellite map. This is really big on the radar, the maps. Um, a couple of meteorologists uh, tweeted saying, you know, that what we use is this, what we use is that. Radar Pro was one that they used a lot, and this Weather Pro is quite good. Um, 
we'll just pick London. You could see now. By the way, there's something we should mention. Um, a number of European and international uh, viewers said that some of the weather apps that uh, use are popular in the states don't do a very good job overseas, and that may be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, they, uh, in the folks in London uh, said that the that you know that they preferred. Let me see if I can find the name of the uh, app. Met Office was very popular. Okay. Um, and, and as I said, the the meteorologists like Radar Scope. I'm having trouble with Radar Scope right now. It says this product is not available for this radar at this time. I think that must be some weird in in uh, app purchase. But look at this. The radar maps. Uh, this this is fantastic. You want to see a satellite view? Even if you're not into radar, this might be something that you would find kind of cool. It's going to take a little while to load this satellite view, but we'll actually have uh, pictures. This is weather for people who really... Hardcore weather Yeah, folks. they really care. Not so you could have Holtzville, that? Long Island, MacArthur Airport. What a happy sun. Any nice? <laughs> or... 38% 30, 30 humidity, people. You could have this. Yeah. <laughs> just depends. It's all... It just depends on what kind of person what you are, and we're not going to judge. For. Look at this. UV. Yeah. Um, uh, this is uh, 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 inches of mercury. This is barometric pressure. Rain inches, miles per hour in the wind, uh, temperature in Fahrenheit, and of course... You can always uh, do it in centigrade or Celsius, I guess they call it right now. And there are subscriptions for more elaborate stuff. There's the satellite. Look at this. This is this is downloading a movie. That's why it takes so long. But I have to say, very cool. This is the kind of stuff you see on the television. I said on the tele. <laughs> okay. What is happening? It's our internet. Is probably. this our thirteenth episode? No, Shit it's our fifty-third. Like it's almost as old as I am. This yeah. show. Yeah. Well, anyway, you get the idea. This is, uh, this is uh, I don't know, maybe if your internet's better, this works better. So here's, here's what's cool, though. A little iPad Easter egg of sorts. If you download an app called Fahrenheit, it looks pretty native, doesn't it? This yeah. is something called Fahrenheit. Now, this isn't yeah. native, and it's actually, um, it's not free either. It's, I believe, 99 cents. But what it does is it looks like something that comes right with your iPad, which a weather app does not. Let's all not forget that... You have to download an app or at least go through Safari to get your weather because for whatever reason, iOS on the iPad side just doesn't have a native weather app, which is just bizarre. It's one but of the reasons we didn't talk about iPhone weather apps so much because you got a weather app that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And back in, I think back in the day, maybe we did talk about weather app and maybe we scrapped it as a theme because there just weren't enough iPad apps. There are a lot now. And, and many of them have been uh, rewritten to be uh, native. But Fahrenheit is great because not only does it give you your weather, uh, this is very, it's very cut and dry. I mean, Simple, there's, there's not pretty. much to it. Yeah, it, it looks good. Uh, you can um, share it on Facebook exactly. just like anybody cares. Yeah, I know. It's so weird. Look, do you, would you like to share the weather with a friend? I mean, I guess if you were on vacation and you were gloating that it was 90 degrees and it was snowing back in Alberta, Canada, maybe you would do something like that. That's all fine. But what I really like about it is, okay, San Francisco, that's that's what I'm tracking right now. It's 69 degrees. Watch when this. I go back to, to, my, to my app here. It says... 71. 71. Oh, you know why? It's because it's tracking my current location. Sebastopol. I, I said, well, Petaluma, because <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm in Petaluma right now. But, but it's, see, it, well, it's a, it's a little hack because it's changing the notification uh, badge on the icon. So it looks like unread messages, which tripped right. me up a little bit, where I was like, what does that number mean? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's the weather. Right. So that's pretty cool. I like that. If you want something that's just simple, it looks like it belongs there, Fahrenheit might be the way to go. I forgot to, by the way, uh, th we're going to show you some web-based apps, but I want to thank Climateer Jacob uh, Tendel, who uh, was the guy who recommended Weather Pro HD. He says, I'm a meteorologist, and I swear by it, and the devs are meteorologists as well. So that's the Weather Pro, that, all, those, all those beautiful videos and so forth. And let me briefly, for honorable mention, this is the free app from the Weather Network. You didn't think much of it until I showed you the pinch. It's true. And That's the, true. And look at this. We kind of pinch these these cards. They're, it's like cover flow yeah, for weather. But it's stupid. I mean, that's all it does. That's the best part about it. So now here are some safari-based tools. That's right. Tools. Umbrella today, you floated I my way. I love this. And I and you think what if you if you see the URL umbrellatoday.com, what do you think it does? It does exactly what you think it does. You enter in uh, a, a zip code. And Umbrella Today tells you whether you need an umbrella today or not. No! no. Not if your zip code is 10012. That's Manhattan, isn't it? Uh, so that's great. It's simple. It's very simple. You can't actually get more information. There's forecasts and stuff. But that's exactly. And so, so it's not as if, is this web down for everybody or just me kind of thing? Or like, kinda is Twitter like down? That, no. Though. It's kind of like that, but that's, that's for right now. Scoble in this room. Yeah. 
No. Yes. No. Obviously. Yeah. But this is, it's actually taking the forecast for the entire day. No, you don't need an umbrella today type yeah. of thing. If you needed it, according to the data that it's gathering, by 6 p.m., if it was going to be showering, it would say yes. Because, of course, when you leave the house, if it's going to rain even your last five minutes on your commute home, you want to know about that. Yeah. So there you go. That's free. They have an iPad app that, or an iPhone app, rather, that's, I think, $1.99. And I kind of went, uh, I don't know why Not I would sure use that, that if yeah. I can just launch the website that well, works and just fine. Are, and again, to, to reiterate, and I know we've probably missed your, or maybe missed your favorite weather app, but there are literally dozens. Yeah. Uh, there's some really good ones. I think that Elios is very spectacularly beautiful. That one's I cool. really like that. A-E-L-I-O-S. Uh, if you want all the information in the world, probably Weather Pro HD would be a good choice for you. It certainly is very polished, very professional. Uh, but then there's some other ways, and uh, of course those are... Yeah, we tried to give you uh, some, some options based on what you want. And again, uh, we we only covered a few because, of course, this is just an hour or so show. And thanks to all the people yeah. on, 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 on uh, Google's, uh, Google Plus, who had great recommendations, tons of them, and on Twitter, too. I know it was it was a little bit of cheating, but I was doing an experiment. I really wanted to see if we could get comparable results on uh, on Google Plus uh, as we could get on uh, Twitter. Over a hundred responses on uh, Google Plus, and and everything that we've mentioned, except for the uh, Angry Birds, was uh, something that we've shown. So thank you, Jay thanks Andrews. to all, all the people uh, who had such great suggestions. I really think I I know what you mean about cheating because it's like hey give us ideas for our theme today but it's a great use it's of impossible to know everything yeah. if we spent uh, if we just said okay let's download everything available in the app store that's weather related and just see what's the best we'd never finish and we and should mention so much. there's the obvious ones which we left out like uh, IntelliCast and mm -hmm. Weatherbug I've used Weatherbug for a long time uh, great stuff but. Uh, and the two that we mentioned at the beginning, Weather Plus and Weather HD, which have been around for a long time. But these are some new ones and some really good stuff, I have to say. Very, yeah. yeah. Weather Pros is... Um, Isn't that nice? Yeah, that's a good one. And, uh, and a consensus is, by the way, from a lot of pros and serious weather people that that's very accurate. You know, that's something we didn't mention. But there, at least according to Twitter and Google Plus, there are some accuracy issues with many apps. I guess it's where right. they get their data from. It, I, if you're, for all of us non-meteorologists, it's sort of like, so it's going to be sunny in 68 today? Right. Okay. It's like, well, where's that information coming right. from? Right. Uh, many sources. Uh, not always the same place. And certainly, as we know, weather can change on us. If you, if you were trying to write down everything that we talked about and figure out links and prices. Have we stored that anywhere? Yeah, actually. It's funny that you ask that. We have. It's at twit.tv slash IPT. That's actually our show page. Oh. Where we have all of our shows all of our show archives that's where you could look up if you were trying to figure out now when did they talk about the weather before you could look through our archives and find out never really <laughs> that's how you found out yeah that's exactly how I found out and, and I produced this show you know uh, but that but we've done 53 episodes now so we've got all sorts of good stuff in and there. we are redesigning the website yeah and in the new website one of the things I really want to do and we will do is uh, in the show notes I, I've realized that what we really need in every show note uh, for every show is three things who the hosts were, mm -hmm. what if there were picks, as there are in this case, what the picks are, and then links that we mentioned in the show. And so we're going to really endeavor in our show notes from now on to have that right front and center because I know that's what people really come to the show notes for. Exactly. And we have yeah. that information there now, but we can organize it better. I yeah. think that that's a, the right way to do it we're because do we that. have our picks and then we just talk about news in general and, right. and it'll give you guys an easy, quick look. So that's twit.tv slash IPT. And reminder that if you're not watching live... Please do. It's really fun. You can watch us flounder right in front of you in real time. 1.30 uh, p.m. Pacific, 4.30 p.m. Eastern is uh, when we do shoot live on Thursday. Do you edit the floundering out? No, uh, there's plenty of floundering in the recorded version. We didn't really flounder version. today. <laughs> I think if, if Amber and I had to bleep out uh, a cuss word on the social hour the other day that ended up being on the live show, so it's like... You get little nuggets of goodness or badness, depending on whether well, you like profanity or not sometimes. Yeah. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same show. We just add in a lot of informational lower thirds. There afterwards. was that wild rhinoceros attack two weeks ago. We had to edit that. Well, out. that would have been inappropriate to leave in. I don't think we could have. No. Yeah, under, under any circumstances. Well, there would have been a liability issue for sure. <sighs> you know what we'll never leave out? What? Our good friends at FreshBooks.com. <sighs> That's for sure. I'm telling you, I used to do invoices. Fortunately, I have people to do that. But if you don't have people... <laughs> Aren't you lucky? If you're not like Leo... If you can't palm it off on other people, you might want to take a look at FreshBooks.com. It is truly a lifesaver 
for invoicing. Uh, here's the deal. Uh, you, you create a, an invoice template using your own uh, logo, and so it's very professional looking. Uh, it emails the invoice out uh, at your behest. By the way, if you do time and hours, there's a time and hours tracking app for the iPhone, iPad, and the web, so you can actually track your hours, push a button, and it goes automatically right into the invoice, which I, I love. That's awesome. And then here's the neat thing about doing it via email. There's a button that says Pay Leo right in the invoice. And, in, and they can pay you with a credit card, with PayPal, with Authorized Net, with 11 payment gateways so that you get paid faster with FreshBooks. Easier to make the invoices, easier to get paid by the invoices. And should you have those clients, we all do, that don't pay right away, there's a great follow-up system, including an automatic tickler that will automatically re-invoice them in 30, 60, 90 days, whatever you say, late payment reminders. It's kind of a nice, simple way to let your clients know you're, you're looking for that, uh, that check. It's very professional looking. Uh, and, by the way, uh, you can also have paper invoices printed, stamped, and mailed. For an additional price, which is great. If you work in um, internationally, as I did, I was billing in both dollars and Canadian, U.S. dollars and Canadian dollars. They handle currency beautifully and automatically. I'm just a huge FreshBooks fan. I used them and started using them in 2004 because Amber Mac recommended them, and I've been using them for a long time. Can I highly recommend that you give FreshBooks a try? Now, right now, if you want, you can start for free with the first three clients. It's free for three. And once you try, you can easily upgrade to, uh, say, 25 clients for $20 a month. It just takes a minute to set up an account. So go to FreshBooks.com. And again, your first three clients are free. And don't let me forget to tell you that every week FreshBooks gives away a birthday cake to one of our fine viewers. It doesn't even have to be your birthday to win. So make sure you tell them you heard it about uh, heard about FreshBooks on iPad today so that you can be in that drawing. FreshBooks. Com. It is a great site for people who are tired of the work of invoicing. I've had one of their cakes. It's, it was delightful. It's from Caroline's. Yeah. It comes in Actually, a I didn't know that. special they told me. freezer box, and it's very fresh and delicious. Very nice. I went ahead and just turned off our Wi-Fi. Uh, I'm doing much better on 3G. You know, we should have just done that in the first place. I know. Place. I, don't, I don't know why. We're just like, Wi-Fi work. We <laughs> demand you. We have 3G iPads, so that's kind of the beauty of this whole thing. Uh, so, What's uh what, what I was just gonna, gonna say, say so what's been going on in iPad land? I'm I, glad you asked. I hear that. the Pope has been tweeting. So there was all of this a uh, Twitter about a po uh, the Pope tweeting. So the Pope tweets, isn't that wonderful? Everybody's happy, dear, dear friends. friends I just praise be our Lord. No, no, you gotta let me do it because okay. I could do it in the okay, uh, Father Guido Sarducci Please accent. Please do. He says, dear friends, I just launched the news that the VA, praise be our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, with my prayers. And oh, he's German. Never mind. That was so weird. <laughs> I was like, that does not sound anything like him. Pope Benedict the 16th. Yeah, uh, pizza. Isn't that? I, I, but here's, it's a little okay, weird. But, so, so great. Okay, Pope's tweeting. And yeah. It's probably not even him. However, if you look at no, the tweet. No, it is him. Okay, fine. So it's he so, wouldn't lie. Well, I I just saying he's the, the pope. pope has handlers. That's all I'm saying. But if you look underneath the tweet itself, look where he's tweeting from. Twitter for iPad. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Well, we have I believe video, don't we, of yes, him we uh, tweeting from the iPad. In so fact, if you had, Leo, we do. If you were in <laughs> doubt, in the least bit in doubt, they actually recorded this momentous occasion when his uh, his holiness, mm -hmm. the the leader of the Catholic world, gets. Yes gets to actually visit and use an iPad. That's right. No, it didn't go to the... Well, no, actually, I want to see the whole thing. Oh, you do? I okay. like it. From RomeReports.com. This is a, this is a kissing. social media expert, does Your have, Holiness. Does, does he have... Uh, this is a fat guy who knows how to work computers. Mutton chops? Your Holiness. This is what we call it. All this. right, Pope, come on what over here. What is the picture on there? That looks Beals? like Harry Truman. Oh, okay. Why does he have Harry Truman on the front of it? Look his? at this fancy thing. This is like my, my 99 grandma, oh, except that she wouldn't be smiling. She'd be confused and angry if I showed her something like this. Look, Safari, let's launch it. Come on, Pope. That's your website. Enter. Oh, see all the cameras going off? Yeah. Wow. It's a big deal. He's publishing. So Twitter. <laughs> Did you hear that? Andiamo Twitter. <laughs> Let's go to Twitter. Andiamo Twitter. It's an iPad spotted in the wild you don't see every day in Vatican City. I love City. it that it takes eight cardinals for the Pope to tweet. They all look sort of like, okay, is he going <laughs> to... 
What is he going to say about this? Is he having fun? Is he awake? What's going on? Pinch and zoom. Pope learning how to pinch and zoom. Wonderful. This is you, Your Holiness. We have a picture. What if he was just like, eh, I don't need this. Oh, you know that afterwards he's gone, man, I'm so glad we got those nerds. Give me my here. Dell. Yeah. I need my Dell back. <laughs> give, me, give me my Chromebook. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with the iPad. Pope's uh, Pope's using iPad, and the world's in a better place. Uh, uh, We like to talk about, every so often, cool HTML5 upgrades. Uh, It seems to be a new trend. Tumblr is the latest that has pretty much rewritten their web experience. So this is in Safari on the iPad. Yeah, this is in Safari. And it's for anybody who uses Tumblr, it's just... uh, How is it different? Well, it's, it's just... It's set up differently. It's a little bit faster. You've got a nice little tag tag exploration option, which some people are kind of not happy about because Tumblr's putting a lot of emphasis on tags lately. So you get things like this that just... Well, that's cool. Yeah, they just look better for iPad. It's yeah. This is this is stuff that just was not possible before. I do like before. that. Yeah. Tumblr has had an iPhone app from the, the dawn of man. Well, from, from, from a long time ago. But you get an idea. Here are all the blogs that I, I have authoring put privileges on what you can also do this is also new is there's a private message system within tumblr now which works a lot like form spring where somebody could ask me a message just to me and uh-huh. i could and i could answer you know anonymous is asking me uh, or killer on is asking really me. taking off Boy. Yeah. oh yeah oh no they're they're big they're they're more tumblr users than wordpress uh dot uh dot dot com. com users wow. yeah so anyway you get the idea it's uh it's just it just works better in safari and because my gripe from the very beginning was they've got a nice iphone app but it doesn't really work like the web experience and it's not optimized for ipad and it doesn't look like they're going to have an ipad app launching very soon because they've spent a lot of time on the web experience which is just fine with me because as long as i have an experience that works well i can go ahead and bookmark this uh, this URL and it could be um, w- with my apps as well if I want it to be. But yeah, it works really nicely. Uh, it's good stuff. Also new, a uh, Flipboard's been updated. I guess we have to do this every time. But uh, well, introducing the new edition of Flipboard. They now have content guides. Yeah. I think that some Just of the Flipboard the competitors were doing well. News Me is one example. Um, uh, what was the other one that I've been playing around with lately? It's more of a, if you like this article, right. perhaps you'd like this, more of a curation type of thing that Flipboard hasn't really done that well. It gives you an option to... I'm still a fan. I mean, this is, to me, the best way to read tweets, uh, mm-hmm. make a magazine out of it. This is that new ribbon, so you press that, and this is going to recommend content in a variety of uh, different uh, y- you know categories, sports, tech, cool curators. I think that's a good idea because I, I imagine a lot of normal people go to go to Flipboard and they say, well, okay, well, how do I populate these uh, these squares? They've also added LinkedIn. So uh, what should I take out of here? What do I care not so much about? Uh, let's photos? take out Flip Photos. Yeah, I like photos, but I'll put it in, on the next yeah. page. We'll add uh, something. This is featured. Uh, again, we're having that Wi-Fi issue. So. Why don't you turn off your Wi-Fi? Uh, you know, it was off briefly. Let me turn it back uh, back off. Did it turn itself back on? It did. Oh, that's interesting. So you've got like artificial intelligent Wi-Fi. Actually, I don't think it's our Wi-Fi. I think it's our Comcast cable that's yeah, gone off. Everything's you know everything's down. Everything's going to be so much better. This place is falling apart. In the new studio, and I think it's the old studio knows that. It, that, that well, the old studio is upset. It's upset. It's bitter. Yeah. And says you're going to be in here for another three weeks. Look what I'm going to do to you. Yep. I'm going to sabotage all of your programming, and you're going to run out of money, and you won't be able to move anywhere, and you'll have to stay here. And you will have to keep your LinkedIn account, Sarah. <laughs> so here <laughs> no. we go. Finally, thanks to 3G. Yeah. These are some of the things that uh, it suggests. And in here is also social is now LinkedIn. Now, I, I killed my LinkedIn account, but uh, if you have a LinkedIn account, you notice something, though, which I think is absolutely true, that most of the content coming into LinkedIn is really just republished Twitter stuff. Well, I hadn't thought about that, but you you, you were the one who reminded me because yeah. it is easy to link up the two. Facebook is the same way. I yeah. mean, a lot of the stuff that I read in my Facebook feed on Flipboard is people who, like me who import their tweets. So I was like, ah, I've already read this. Right. Um, so these are the kind of services where you start getting into that situation where it's really good not to just send the same message to a bunch of different services because when they get aggregated in one place, it's kind of annoying. I do think that Flipboard 
to someone who's new, you love it for tweets. But well, I think that to people me, it could turns be... tweets into a magazine yes. that is then, because I'm looking for articles, and that's how I use Twitter mostly, is yes. a, a signaling system for stuff that's of interest to me. Mm -hmm. um, so this just turns that stuff into a readable magazine, in effect. And I, I have to say, I, I think, you know, for instance, this is uh, Robert Scoble's tech, tech influencers list on Twitter. So these are all tweets that I, you know, and then if I'm kind of interested uh, in it, uh, there's the article right there. I mean, this is a very nice way. Well, because he to took, read. he spent a lot of time curating his, his personal list, but it's right. public, so you didn't have to go and think, okay, what's an influencer that uh, yeah, he he's kind of done all your work for you. And Here's an example. This is the Economist Twitter stream, but basically, this is the Economist. It, you know, so it takes the Twitter stream and turns yeah. it into a magazine. But I think that. If uh, someone was new to Flipboard and, and particularly new to, to the iPad experience, they could think that Flipboard was like, oh, it's just a, re a way to read tweets and it makes it pretty. And right. obviously, especially with this new update, there's a lot more to oh, yeah. it, oh, um, yeah. depending on what you're interested in. I mean, you could just, you could read magazine articles about fishing if you right. wanted to, or read just recipes. Um, I actually read Smitten like Kitchen via Flipboard tell, all the time. I like ph photography on the... Well, that's a nice and, picture. And this is what I mean, is that, that this is where, you know, you could have, you could have seen all this. Uh, this is the National Geographic picture of the month. Um, you could have seen all this on Twitter and then gone to the webpage, but isn't it nice to be able to page through it on yeah. Flipboard? Well, I you've think got it all. Great. You've got it all in one place. Yeah. And, and then I use it. It's important for me because then I have the sharing capability. I can uh, I can retweet it or tweet the link, mm -hmm. and it automatically goes to Pinboard. I have all sorts of elaborate uh, sharing capabilities. Yeah, you share it on Facebook it. and say, doesn't this rem remind you of 120 hours or whatever that movie was? The oh, yeah, that's right. One, 127 hours. 127 yeah. hours, yeah. yeah. Fruit. Ooh, yum, fruit. In Peru. Mm, I can smell the fruit mm, now. Can't you? Yeah. yeah. Those rotting fruit markets. They're fun. So we've got some updates. Wanted to let you guys know about that. Also, some cool stuff happening in the App Store right now. The iTunes Music Festival. Did you realize that that's been going on for years and years? What is it? It's it's a music festival that takes place in a variety of different venues. Uh, so I'm not sure if it's always nights. in London, but it is this year. It says 31 nights, 62 artists, one venue. So there's mm -hmm. a new venue, a new uh, artist every night in the same venue here. That's which right. Which is kind of cool. And then what do you, can you listen to their music? Yeah, well... The, oh, I love the, Adele. So do I. Who doesn't? Yeah, Arctic so this Monkeys. is all right. So this is actually the app. So it's not only just a, a a festival that's going on, but this is a way for me to keep track of all the bands that are playing. Now the emphasis is these are actual concerts. I mean, Paul Simon is playing tomorrow, Friday, July first, at an actual venue. It gives me some information on on where he's going to be playing, and then what kind of songs are are new. Why is he part of this lineup? And then I can tap to preview a variety of songs that are in iTunes. So this is. It's not like, oh, it's some sort of virtual concert and you watch it all via an app. It's a real concert, right. but they're trying to bring you in, especially for anybody who's not going to be in London and isn't going to be there in person, to get a sense of what's, what's hot on iTunes right now. So this is iTunes, kind of a curated concert, and they've been doing this for years. They've got a main space and they have private studio sessions. So I'm confused. Is it an actual concert or yes. just a virtual concert? No, it's an actual concert. This is just an app that they built around it so that you can keep track of who's participating, like the Naked and Famous are playing on July 13th at 12:15 p.m. Where, uh, um, passive me, aggressive you. I like it. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. And yeah, so you, oh, I see. So if you look, uh, well, this is when it's going to be live. Um, a little bit of news based on. Oh, we just signed. Um, is this uh, an Apple app? Must be. Yeah, it's it's Apple. iTunes made it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's it built around the festival. It's pretty cool. And I hadn't heard of it before, but apparently the festival's been going on for years and years. And mm. I assume it's bigger and better than ever because they have a lot of big bands. Coldplay, for example, obviously a very big band. I've heard of them. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Also in iTunes, there is. This is. Uh, I'm pretty Get happy about ready. this. For the Harry Potter experience. What they have is not just uh, Harry Potter the movies, which is like, I was like, oh, well, yeah, that's interesting. Trailers. So you can watch trailers. Featurettes. You can watch all of the old movies, but if you keep scrolling down, you also have Harry Potter audiobooks, Harry Potter soundtracks, Harry Potter uh, based apps. Oh, so, wait a minute. This is, the, this is their first screen the test. Map is the only Look how little, little they were. The Sorcerer's Stone. The what? Oh, honestly, don't you two read? And then they said, could you be a little less English? 
Yeah. So, you know, these are, are the incredible um, uh, Jim Dale narrations of the Harry Potter books. They are so good. If you haven't listened to the Harry Potter books, uh, highly recommended. Jim Dale is a, is a real super talent, and I think you'll really enjoy these. If you're a Harry Potter fan, head on over to their special Harry Potter page on iTunes, because even there, if David. you've seen all the movies a million times, some of you might. Even like, apps. Yeah, the apps and the audiobooks and just kind of. Even Le Lego Harry Potter. It, this is the time if you want to get Harry Potter crazy, do it now. Get all into the featurettes, watch all the behind are the you, scenes stuff. You, uh, am I am I Potter am I a crazy? Potter fan? Yeah. Absolutely, and not only because it's in my summer movie draft. Oh, is it? Yes. So you you it's think how it's going, going to do to well? Take all. July fifteenth, HP seven. That's right. It's gonna kill yeah. at the box office. I'm yeah. sure of it. But yes, Did I am a Harry Potter fan. Uh, uh, this is part two of the Deathly Hallows. Did you see part one? Of course. HP six. Yes. I th I why, why would I have not seen part my one? Problem That's is, just weird. I know I've seen quite a few of them, and I just have no idea if I've seen that one. Well, how would I know? Because you aren't they all kind of because you would have seen it? Basically the same. No, they uh, all seem come pretty on. much. Well, it seems like if I've watched one through two. So this is the one after. See, I can't say it. I I'm read afraid, all the books. I know. I know. I know the plot. Well, I've but read I'm all afraid if I say something that's obvious Don't to say us, anything. it'll spoil it for someone and they'll write me hate Is this mail. the one that was really, really dark? Or was that HP5? No, that was, yeah. That was HP5. So yeah. I haven't seen HP6. Well, that's weird. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know what they're doing at, oh. um, at the uh, the Century on Venice? Is they're doing back-to-backs. Oh, so when I you should go do and that. see the new movie, you actually sit there for six hours and you watch both parts together. Oh, my God. Isn't that God. fun? Can I, I know. My, can I bring my ball to sit on? My blood pressure cuff? Mm. A meal. That might be sort of weird. You okay. just kind of sit in the corner, yeah. you know, blocking the I'm aisle just have for a everyone else. Sandwich now. With your popcorn yeah. and your ball. <laughs> six, it's six hours? Is that how much it would be? Some, I well, it I mean, be something like that. Both of them together, uh, something around there. We always want to thank our viewers for sending us all sorts of great weather app ideas and all the all the encouragement and the feedback and the ideas that you give us uh, the rest of the week, too, between shows. Paps in Germany wrote to say, and this was based on our conversation last week, about why sometimes when you plug in, when you use your USB um, uh, connection, uh, plugging into a, a laptop to, to get power into your iPad, sometimes it doesn't charge. He says... The charging issue actually is the is uh, other USB devices is the amps the USB port puts out, not the voltage actually. Voltage is standard. What's different is the amps are amount of electricity that the port can deliver. Right. The IP, uh, I think iPad. I said watts, which is volts times amps, and of course oh, the volts are always the same. Right. So he uh, goes on to say, iPad large battery. 0.5 amps is standard USB port puts out not enough to put a noticeable charge on an iPad so it says not charging even though like I said it actually does it actually minimal trickles charge, it up? Okay. but it's not it's it would take all night uh, the newer MacBooks and the MacBook Pros have special USB ports that carry closer to two amps so that can charge an iPad that's the deal so it's 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 older um it's older laptops MacBook and he Pros. did make the point which I had said we'll get a powered USB hub he said that's not necessarily going to do it because the standard is so low mm -hmm. a, a typical USB powered hub would, would adhere to the standard not the higher so it's two, the special uh, two, USB uh, ports in the newer MacBook Pros. yeah Apple actually redesigned the USB ports they went beyond spec to make that uh, possible that's I think unfortunate but that's how they do it also Kevin Shannon what uh, we talked about the slate iPad um, experience last week and it looked so nice and it kind of had that flipboard look right? right Kevin Shannon wrote in and said you know how they did that a company called Onswipe that Onswipe does, yeah it does features like this uh, they, they partner up with a variety of companies Slate was just one of them that we stumbled across by accident Marie and Claire Gary, is another Gary Keith, uses it Gary Vaynerchuk apparently has an Onswipe enabled Marie version of his Claire. website so yeah, you uh, you register and it can help you. I'm not sure what the pricing is. Well, thanks for the tip on that. Yeah, absolutely. I had no idea. I thought that Slate was just really awesome and internally put something together, but it looks like Onswipe could could I think give we that should functionality talk to, to them. a lot. I know. I was sort of thinking the same thing. Wouldn't it be neat mm. to have a, a tiled homepage mm. of all of the newest mm. shows mm. Mm. you could kind of swipe mm. into? So that's Onswipe. If you guys are interested in that or you even have a website that you think could benefit, onswipe.com. Thanks to Kevin for the uh, for the heads up on that. We should we shall definitely uh, speak to the folks at OnSwipe. Absolutely. Because I would love to have that capability on the uh, new Twit. 
yeah. homepage. I'm not sure what the limitations are, but it's definitely worth talking to them. Yeah, because we're not a magazine, but uh, but I, but I, I, but it, but you I could, don't think it needs could, to be a you magazine. You could think of flipping between... Visually, yeah. I think that no, there think might be something there for us, uh, certainly as an option. Yeah. Okay, on to voicemails. Kathy has a question about um, how to leave your iPad alone the right way. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Leo. It's Kathy Grant. Um, I had a question regarding whether or not it's better to put your iPad in standby or rather to shut it down all the way if you're going to leave it like overnight. Is it better for your battery? Which? What do you think? Thanks for the show. Love it. Listen to you all the time. Thanks, Bye. Kathy. Thanks, Kathy. My, I almost never shut this thing down. Yeah, ever. I don't think I don't think that makes any difference to the battery. Uh, I do think and it that will trickle down very slowly. Yeah, but the battery's I mean, it's using so good the battery, but I don't think it makes that much difference. Yeah. I I think that the only reason you might want to turn it off once in a while is it's a it's a reboot. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, if, for instance, if you see force closes a lot, I noticed you had that force close earlier. Uh, uh, sometimes turning it fully off and turning it on again uh, is just a way to kind of clear the memory out. And I think it, it may be completely, you know, imaginary, but it does seem to me. That, that seems to happen reliable. too. This morning I updated like 24 apps. I just, yes, it was me a, too. There was a Ton big update this morning, yep. uh, or at least that's when I did it. And yeah, sometimes after something that big, it's like you just want to start you, fresh. You got a lot of apps running in the background. You've mm -hmm. used chewed up a lot of memory. Maybe it's not. It's fragmented. So restarting the thing, I think, is not a bad idea. But you don't need to do it every night. And I, I don't think there's any difference from the battery's point of view. Don't worry about it. You're going to get sick of this thing long before the battery does. Right. I mean, I guess if you get on a plane, they'll want you to turn it off before you get to a certain elevation. I never even do, do that. you shut it off like all the way off? Oh, I just go I airplane just, mode. I press the button and it says off. Yeah. I don't, I don't well, know. Well, you know, hey, if you're a pilot and you have an opinion on whether people, should we be turning this all the way off? Should we take all of our iOS devices, press the start stop button, hold it for three seconds, swipe it to turn it off uh, when we take off? Is that is that what you want me to do? I don't think a lot of people know that that is different than My wife the turn off. My wife has no idea. She thought, oh, this is the on off switch. Well, I think that that's also kind of misleading on Apple's part. I mean, it's on off. Why, why Look, would you not think it's, it's off? It's on now, and I press the button, it's off. Isn't that off? Right. On. Off. Off. Yeah. I mean, that's what Jennifer thought, and of course she did. And Kathy, that's, that's, that's standby mode that Kathy's talking about. Right. So she understands that it's not off at, at that point. But Kathy, no, I don't she, really think she's unless... Saying, well, if you press it, and hold this for three seconds, yeah. you will get this... Swipe, swipe to turn off. To power off. That's a full. Oh, I shouldn't do it because I'm. Don't do it. You I need got a show this. to do. But yeah. that will turn it off, and then it, you know, it has to reboot. And it's about thirty seconds to get back uh, up and running, and that's a real turn off. That clears out memory, starts fresh. I think doing that once in a while is certainly a good idea. Yeah, but but you don't have to do that if you're going to be away for it for overnight or anything. Right. In fact, if you're at seventy five percent. In the morning, you might be at 74. I mean, it's the battery really holds, yeah. especially if you're not using the iPad at all. So thanks for the feedback. We got so many emails we weren't able to get to. We never can because our, our inbox oh, runneth over. But we got to... You don't want to use the one from the Pope, okay? No, it's okay. I understand. Well, I just we're he, just we're, he we're asked full. us not we're to busy. read his name aloud on the air, so I was just I, I don't understand. even really know why you brought it up just okay. now. It's just sorry. Told you before the show not to do that. Uh, but if you're not the Pope, we do want to hear from you. <laughs> write us at I've had a day at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail, of course, like Kathy did. We got some other voicemails this week. Uh, we'll try to uh, add them into the show next week. 757 504 IPAD or 4723 is our Google Voice number. Or send us a video. Haven't haven't played a video in a while. Um, We'd love to. We would or at love least to. didn't see any. What's always very helpful is in the subject line, if you can just write video, maybe even in all caps, it helps us uh, find them out you'll, of the pack. You'll be more likely to get on the show. That's that right. Yeah. If you do a dance, you get on the show. Just kidding. You don't have to dance. Although if you do the running man, I think you're guaranteed to get on the show while asking an iPad-related question. And you'll be our best <laughs> And if friend. you're wearing a funny hat, all the better. That's right. Before we get to our app caps. Yes. It's time to talk. Yes. About something that <laughs> the Pope doesn't have probably, but should. <laughs> yes. Why wouldn't he? He should get it. Netflix uh, is fantastic. Netflix.com slash twit i love the netflix recommendation engines look at this so based on your rating we think we'd, you'd enjoy these uh, movies uh and then uh, would you like to watch more understated movies uh yeah i li actually i'm gonna say yeah i love understated movies and uh would you uh would you like to uh Watch more movies about midlife crises. Oh, absolutely. Nothing nothing quite like Because well, you want to you wanna watch what you know, right? <laughs> you got it. Yeah. Actually, some might say I'm past midlife. 
Unless no. I unless I live to 108, a midlife is over for 50 me. 50 is the new 30. I wish you were right. Last night we watched babies. No dialogue, just a bunch of babies. Did you like it? Made my ovaries hurt. Really? Uh, understated it, independent comedies. These are all movies you can... Hot, steamy, romantic comedies. Ew. Body Heat. Ugh. Wings of the Dove. Ugh. Sirens. Blech. Dangerous Beauty. The Piano. I don't know how piano these got is on. not a hot steamy I don't know why this got movie. on there. I, I really Please. don't know why it got on there. Um, <laughs> these are all movies you can watch right now. The uh, the the watch instantly queue is fantastic, and and it's only seven ninety nine a month. But try it right now for free for a month, Mister Pope. It's only just all you have to do. Netflix dot com slash twit. It's absolutely free for the first month. And folks, I know you're already members. So if you're you know already a member and you you want to help out the iPad Today Show, just tell your family, your friends. Netflix dot com slash twit. You'll be doing them a favor. Thirty days free of the best darn stuff out there. Netflix.com slash twit. Give it a try. Today. Babies. I didn't realize you had ovaries. That's kind of neat. You're like don't a I, hybrid person. Don't I, have, I don't have a hat. Uh, you need a hat. I've got mine. Well, it's actually yours, but I'm wearing it. It's all right. I have many hats. I'm going to have a special hat collection. You're a man of many hats, a man Leo. of many hats. It's time for... The AppCap Awards! Yeah. This is the part of the show where we highlight, we each highlight, one app that we love. Yeah. It can be weird. It can be helpful. It could be neither of those things. Yeah. But if we like it, we're going to talk about it. Mine is uh, grammar-related uh, and word-related just because I really like word stuff. It's called terminology. And in fact... You are very verbal. I really like that about you. You have a very, uh, a very verbal mind. Uh, thank you. Quick, quick word. I feel uh, you, uh, you do the what do you call that? The word thing. The, when when I say stuff. <laughs> yeah, you're so good at that. And I make sentences. Yeah, you know the thing that the, with the uh, and then you say and, and it's it, great. And it's and and there's the. I love that about you. Yeah. I, I, so is this an app to help you? Some people have accused me of not actually being very eloquent with my words because really? I forget words a lot. Oh, no, but that's just because I'm trying to use them all at once. I need to clear my <laughs> cash and shut down every once in a while. You can give me some of your cash. Greg okay. Pierce, actually, he's a terminology developer. Uh, uh, turned me on to this. I had never heard of it before. They have an iPhone app and an iPad app. We're looking at the iPad app, so it's nice. It's nice and optimized. I searched for the word doodle. Why did I search for the word doodle? I don't know. It's just what I did. So what do you find from this? Is well, this a dictionary? It, it, it's, it's a dictionary, but it's more... Um, uh, reference material. So here's uh, the the definition of doodle: an aimless drawing. It's a noun or a verb to make a doodle draw aimlessly. Less specific draw. Okay, so here's where it gets cool. Over in the articles section, I could click on this to get articles that contain doodle, or I could go over to Wikipedia and get a sense of what, what's the origin of the word. Yeah, doodle might not be the best Wikipedia entry, but you get an idea. I mean, obviously, Wikipedia gives you so much more reference that a simple definition wouldn't. So here's, yeah, they've got like, here's different kinds of doodles, like a Simpson character, blah, blah, blah. There's also a uh, quick... Oh. That's quick, cool. Yeah, WordNeck uh, link, so I could go ahead and open Doodle on WordNeck. It's What's WordNeck? Is that like Redneck for words? No, it's it's more of an all-in-one encompassing. Uh, it's a reference for word files, mm. Wordo files. Again, see, she's so good with the words. Yeah, I know. I just make them up. <laughs> I make up words that don't even exist. I'm like a, I like, I like a, like a, a dictionary. You're a, what is the an word? AI You're... dictionary. Yeah, that's the word. Artificial intelligence is the key mm. here. So here, okay, so this is, this is just sort of what, uh, what, what you get when you look up the word doodle. But let's say that I want to customize it a little bit. So if I click on settings here, and by the way, it'll let you change the font if you care about stuff like that. I don't really, but some people do. Here's where I can go ahead and say, oh, let's let's turn on a, a Google link. Anytime I search for a certain word, I want to figure out like what would be the top five hits mm, when I search it on Google. Yeah. Um, or Bing, for example. Mm -hmm. Or Termly, which is another kind of a search engine type of thing. I can uh, link it to my Instapaper account. Uh, my Twitter account, Echo Phone. I'm not really sure why Echo Phone and Echo Phone Pro are in here. I guess that's probably it's Twitter. Maybe just one of yeah, one of their one of their first uh, partners. Tumblr. I haven't set up my account here on Tumblr, but uh, it gives me a nice quick view to go to the App Store. So like if I said Leo, right? Let's just say, say Leo. Let's just say Leo, and let's go ahead and say Leo just in general. What's Leo? Astrology. A person yeah, who is born yeah. while the sun is in Leo, and so on and so forth. But th let's say I That's go. Me. Let's say I go to Bing. Bing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna search for Leo and Bing. What's gonna come up first? I don't know. I've who never knows? done this before. It's pretty exciting. Leo is a free online English yes. German dictionary that, that includes entries for IT terms. I know. I'm trying to put them in a business. And then Leo Laporte's official website is second. Can you believe that I'm number two if you search for Leo? 
Well, in Bing, but what about Google? Let's the do this. Number three in Google. Le what's number one? We've Ast got the Leo dictionary. We have astrology. Leo explain. Oh, it's an astrology thing. Yep. See, that's interesting. So you kind of get you get an idea. There's a of, difference. Yeah, and uh, and then of course on Instapaper, then I it hit, takes me over to my Instapaper account where then I can uh, choose to share later. It's 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 word stuff. It's weird word stuff. I love this terminology. Is it's two ninety nine for the iPad app. The Ooh, iPhone that's... app is one ninety nine. So I think it's steep. Yeah. But I also think that if you are, oh, I don't know, an English major or just somebody who words. who likes this kind of stuff. You're one e of those word, word, yeah. I mean, maybe, people. maybe you're not a recreational word weirdo. You're just a word But this might user. actually come up in school Yeah. for people. You like the words. Yeah. Or you, or you need to just get context on all sorts of words. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, I, I searched for doodle and Leo, so obviously I'm not really all that bright. But if you were, you could search really big words and, and get a lot of context on those two. Terminology, two ninety nine for the right person. And you, yes. Miss Word user person yeah. or the right person. So this <laughs> is this is my pick of the week and actually I've been waiting for this. I've been so excited Your since we saw life. it. Well we saw it at C E S. Or no, maybe Mac World Expo. Where did we see it? Uh, it was C E S. Yeah. The yes. smart blood pressure monitor from Y Things. Now you know about Y Things they do the scale, the tweets and, uh, you know, I think this is the beginning of a whole raft of, uh, you know, health uh, monitoring tools that tie into your smart devices. So this is a blood pressure cuff. This is very similar to the kind that you would buy at the drugstore. In fact, I have bought uh -huh. one at the drugstore for home blood pressure monitoring. Yeah. As you get to be older and fatter, like me, you want to keep an eye on that because blood pressure is the silent killer. I'm going to eat a cookie while you tell me. <laughs> Will you please? Uh -huh. So, but what's interesting about this, look at this. It has not, it has a 30 pin connector. It has a, it has a connector that goes to your, yes, iPad. Now, you could download the Y Things app. I already have it because I've showed you that before. It goes to my scale. So I'm going to plug in this connector and immediately the Y Things app will launch and it's going to be able to mm, take my blood pressure. They give you very good instructions on how to wear the cuff. And all of that stuff, they tell you what it means. And you see, I've already got my account in there. And now I'm going to watch this. I'm going to take my blood pressure. Holy Now, cannoli. I haven't yet figured out. I figure it's going to tweet it. I, there's got to be a way to tweet it. Because I would like to tweet that well, in addition to my... And you already uh, use Why Things in that way with the, right. with the, so the Leo I scale it, account. It probably, it probably is a way to do that. Uh, you should read the instructions carefully. Doing this correctly... Is important. It has to be in exactly the <laughs> Very right Very important place. to not well, get some bizarre reading and freak yeah. yourself out. In fact, out. one of the things is you're supposed to be sitting down. You're supposed to be resting. This is what they say. You're supposed to have your arm at the same level as your heart and all of that stuff. Okay. So well, we're you're, gonna kind of do a phony one you've right been, now. You've been sitting. -ish. I've been resting. I'm. And does I'm, it do that? I'm sedentary. Does it, does Watch it, this. Yeah. Okay. So I press the button. Now this thing uh, has its own uh, AAA batteries. Comes with it. It's now inflating. The I cuff can, is inflating. I can hear it. Yeah. And measurement is underway. And this, uh, it, we, now we did it uh, earlier in the day. I did a variety of measurements. It matches very closely the measurements I got at the doctor and with my uh, blood pressure cuff from the drugstore. So mm -hmm. I think it's pretty accurate. Um, I think my doctor recommended that I take many measurements over a period of time. This is the number I need to get down. You see, there's my heart rate, 86 beats per minute. That's because I'm doing a show right now. But my diastolic is high. I need to get that down to 80. Uh, systolic not so bad so now what it's what it's do doing is it's recording this so I can keep track just as I do of my of my weight over time I can keep track of my blood pressure over time see how I'm doing not only that it does the thing my doctor recommended which is take measurements at several times of the day it keeps track of day morning and evening measurements so that you can tell uh, you know in fact it'll even this is kinda cool it even email your your doctor with the information so you can actually have it uh, mail it out to a, a health professional and so forth. There's a lot of really nice. This uh, is kind of amazing, isn't it? I, I mean, we spent the whole show talking about silly stuff. This is it's awesome. It's the beginning, I think, of a revolution yeah. in healthcare. Share my data with other users. That's the scale that's tweeting. And I don't notice that I can get the cuff to match that. Share my graph with other Why Things accounts. Um, and that could, by the way, be a doctor who could have a Y thing account, but I can also send my blood pressure data by email. So I can take all the measurements I've taken over time. I can put my doctor's email address in there and uh, he can get it. This is what actually he's asked me to do. I just think this is really Give exciting. it to him on a regular basis. Yeah, because uh, he's worried that my blood pressure is a little high, as you can see it is. Uh, and uh, and so I, um, uh, I this is going to make me a healthier person, or if not, it's going to kill me.
Well, you at least have a really good sense of what it is, whether it's good or bad, right? You, you do need to know about it. There are lots of other factors, and this is not a, a device that gives you advice, right. but it just merely makes the measurements. Uh, I'm doing so on the recommendation of my doctor. You might want to ask your doctor about it, show him or her the uh, why things uh, blood pressure monitor. But I can tell you, that based on my experience, having measured my blood pressure for some time, this is, fair, this is very accurate. It's giving you, me an accurate uh, result. I wish it were a little lower. How much is this whole thing going to run somebody? That's a good question, actually. Let's go to the store and find out. They have a baby monitor, which is coming out next, by the way. It's not out yet, but that's going to be cool. Which they also they showed, they showed us. us also, yeah. um, limited What I like about this is it, it works with the iPad, it, and, and it is $129. That's okay. a little more than the cuff that you would get at the store. And, of course, uh, you need to have an iPad or an iPhone. It also works with the iPhone uh, or an iPod Touch. However, um, given the fact that it t keeps track of these, you don't have to write them down, it'll mail them to your doctor, things like that, I think that there's a lot to be said for this. It's, a, it's pretty cool. I'm really excited to have one. I, I ordered it uh, the minute they uh, made the orders available, and they just came. They're just shipping them out today. This is the Why Things, W-I-T-H-I-N-G-S, Smart Blood Pressure Monitor. It's my app cap for the week, and it's hardware, not software. This is great. Isn't that I'm, cool? I'm going to look up words... And you're going to get medical. <laughs> it's interesting how blood pressure changes throughout the day, too. I mean, well, kind of like why, the way that weight fluctuates. It's exactly. good to look at those graphs. That's why my doctor wanted me to measure it on a regular basis. Same thing with weight, exactly. Uh, so now, and I think more information is good. The more you know about your health, the better. And uh, so I think that this is a revolution, really, in, in, in uh, personal care uh, is having this kind of information, having it attached to your smart device, your portable device. It's very cool. Well, Leo, that was an awesome app cap. Why things? You've done it again. Yay! And that's, I know we've uh, seen it before, but I wanted to give you the demo. Yeah. No, it's a good one. Well, that's it for uh, iPad Today today. We're all done. We're all done. We want to thank you for joining us. As Sarah mentioned, we do this show at about 1.30 p.m. Pacific time every Thursday, 4.30 Eastern. Uh, that would be 2030 UTC at live.twit. TV. Do watch live. We'd love to see your feedback in the chat room and, and we so do. forth. Yep. My mom was in chat today. I, I don't it. think she's ever done that before. Hi, Sarah's mom. Hi. Uh, we thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. On iPad Today. <laughs> oh.